Welcome to Creating Wealth with Jason Hartman. During this program, Jason is going to tell you some really exciting things that you probably haven't thought of before and a new slant on investing. Fresh new approaches to America's best investment that will enable you to create more wealth and happiness than you ever thought possible. Jason is a genuine, self-made, multimillionaire who not only talks the talk, but walks the walk. He's been a successful investor for 20 years and currently owns properties in 11 states and 17 cities. This program will help you follow in Jason's footsteps on the road to financial freedom. You really can do it. And now, here's your host, Jason Hartman, with the complete solution for real estate investors. Hey, it's my pleasure to welcome the fabulous Colby Calais to the show. I've been a big fan of her music for many, many years, and she's coming to us from Nashville today. And uh, Colby, welcome. How are you? Thank you. I'm good. How are you? Good, good. It's good to have you on the show. And uh, and uh, you, you've you just got a great career. You know, the first thing I'd like to ask you is you started your career uh, seemingly in a really unique way with MySpace. Uh, and that was probably in the pretty early days of musicians using MySpace as a platform, I assume. What year was it? And how did you how did you get the idea to do that? What, what What's behind that? Uh. I didn't have the idea. It was actually one of my friends from high school. And I think it was um, maybe the end of 2005. Um, and then it was like well into 2006 when, um, you know, my friend put my songs, three of my songs up on MySpace. Well, he first of all, I had these demos and he was like, hey, have you heard of this thing called MySpace Music? And, you know, I wasn't even on Facebook at the time either. So I didn't know what any of that social media was. And uh, I didn't. And so he made me this page and uploaded my demo songs up there. And somehow, I don't know how it happened. I just started getting uh, a following and people kept using my song as their Mm -hmm. like page music, which was so cool that you could do that then. Um, And all of a sudden, within months, I was um, one of the top unsigned artists. And honestly, I, I had no idea how it happened. And it was it was really because my friend put my music up there. That's fantastic. What were those first three songs? Um, Bubbly, The Little Things, and um, I want to say One Fine Wire, uh-huh. I think. Good yeah. stuff. Yeah, I love Bubbly. That's very romantical song. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. As my ex-girlfriend would like to say, romantical. romantical <laughs> she, yeah. she made up her own word. Uh, good <laughs> stuff. So um, the, the MySpace was the start. You know, most mu- the music industry has obviously changed so dramatically over the past several years. Um, were you worried about copyright and sharing and, you know, people just taking your music? Or is that is is this the kind of thing that the music industry should really just stop worrying about and and, you know, use the re- get the revenue from another source? Uh, that's an interesting question. I, I, I mean, at the time, honestly, I was so new at this. I had just started writing songs. Those were demos. My friend just said, put them up there. Like it, I wasn't thinking about people stealing songs because I was so, I was probably four or five months into being a songwriter, to be honest with you. Like that's how new it was. Um, I do miss the, the fact that we can't just put a, a song out. Like I want to, I want to do that more often, like just put a song up a new one right. and see what people think. And I know that someone could take it and produce it by the time before I could even do that. And I know you have to worry about that now. Um, I think at that time we weren't even, it wasn't even a thought. Right, right. Well, that's good. So uh, songwriting, I mean, I just have so much respect for musicians and I like all types of music. My musical taste is so eclectic. It kind of amazes me sometimes. I go everywhere from, you know, Rush to the Carpenters and John Denver. (laughs) I mean, like it's weird, (laughs) but, uh, but whatever it all, I have just massive respect for someone who can write a song. I mean, to me, like writing a book, that seems kind of, well, it's not easy, but you know, you just take your ideas, put them in an outline form, and then you expand upon them, right? How do you write a song? And then beyond that, I mean, do you, well, do you start with lyrics or do you start with a score? I I mean, I just, it amazes me how musicians can just arrange these beautiful lyrics and then put the music to it. Like, how do you know the guitar does this right there? And yeah. you know, I, that's What's just mind boggling. That is that's how I think about writing a book or writing a movie. <laughs> how I don't even know where you begin to mm-hmm. like, know, uh, like how many pages in a book like that, that's so much writing. But to me, a song is easy because it's three minutes and 
you know, you know the structure. There's a verse, a chorus, a verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. And so usually like all you have to do is really write a verse and a chorus and sometimes you don't even need a bridge. And so it's, I feel, I feel like once you get into songwriting, um, you know how short the songs are and it actually does, you can condense everything. You condense your thoughts and you turn it into poetry and somehow magically it always blows my mind that every word rhymes. Like anything that you want to say, you can find a rhyming word for it, which mm -hmm. it, it, that trips me out too. Yeah. Um, but know how the process has started is always different. So sometimes we'll start on a guitar. Um, like sometimes like when I wrote bubbly, I was on my guitar in my bedroom and I actually didn't know my friend had done this new tuning on my guitar and I didn't know how to play it. So I was playing around with some chords and I found three chords that sounded good. And then I started singing and the melody and the words came out at the same time um, for most of the song. Um, so it doesn't start with words most of the time then? It depends on yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like, so then I, I have another song um, uh, I wrote for my friend and she was dating a, uh, this guy. And anyways, I was, I, I basically was just thinking of things about her and the guy that she was dating. And I just started writing stuff down. And then later on I had a writing session and we, we put a melody to those words. Um, so it changes every time. Sometimes I'll, I'll just be in the bathroom and I'll hum a melody and a couple words will come out with it. And then I'll turn that into a chorus, a chorus or a verse. And, um, I think that it's ever changing and that's what keeps it exciting and also keeps it a little challenging for as a songwriter is it, it comes out in all different ways. Sure. Do you, do you, do you get writer's block? I mean, you must, I'm sure. Right. Yeah. You know, how do you find your inspiration? Do you go through a dry spell where you just can't, nothing is coming to you and then maybe you'll what hear another song or a situation in your life or, you know, yeah, all of the above. Yeah, that for me, that's how it happens is um, I'll write about whatever I'm going through. And and then once I'm done with that, I feel like I have nothing more to write about. Then I'll tap into what my friends or family are going through. And I'll try to write what, about what they're if they're going through a breakup or a divorce or something. And maybe if I've written something about that already, then I try to write it from a different perspective. So like when I wrote um, when I wrote my song fearless, I actually wrote it from the guy that I broke up with his perspective, mm -hmm. not, not my perspective of, of the breakup. Oh, interesting. Yeah. 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 So I think you have to get creative in that sense. Um, but, um, oh man, I was just going to add more to that. I'm sorry. I just, threw that's okay. So writer's uh, block, I was, I was talking about yes, writer's block, writer's yeah. block and word block. Um, so, so basically moving here to Nashville, I also realized something is that like, whenever I would write, I would write, about 60 songs for an album. And that would be within two years. And mm -hmm. um, to me, that is a lot of songs. But here in Nashville, the writers, all my friends, they write one to two songs a day, five days a week. And that is amazing. I, it's, wow. it's, it's incredible. It's so it's, 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 it's amazing that they know how to do that. And they have that much creativity to flow out of them and, and to write songs. But for me, I've learned that it's not possible. Um, I need life inspiration and real things um, to be to be to be expressing. And so to me, that means maybe writing a song every four months, one song every four months. Oh, wow, yeah. yeah. So that, that's what I'm learning. And I just started a band with um, some friends here and we wrote, I don't know, we've written like 20 songs in four months. And to me, I'm like, I'm done. I'm tapped out for give a while. Me a <laughs> you need a rest. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. it's it's different for everyone. Yeah, yeah, definitely is. It definitely is. Did, were you classically trained? I mean, did you did you take music theory classes and learn how to write songs, or it just is something you just do as a really as a hobby, I guess? Yeah. No. Um, when I was a teenager, my parents they they knew I wanted to sing, so they put me in vocal lessons. And then when I was nineteen, I took one guitar lesson and I learned four chords. <laughs> They're like the simplest, the box chords, like seriously, like G, C, D, and E. Uh -huh. So you hardly have to move your fingers. And that is honestly how I wrote every one of my songs off my album, Coco. I just, um, I cheated basically. I used those chords and I would change the progression and I would change the, the capo on a different fret of the guitar so that I, it's, it, it gave new sounds and tones to the guitar. And that actually led me to have to create more interesting melodies because the guitar playing was so basic mm -hmm. and the chords were so basic. Um, but, um, after that, no, I never had music and I'm, I'm not a good guitar player either. Uh -huh. I can, I can write to, I can right. play to like write a little bit and that's, 
that's my extent. Sure, sure, sure. But that that's amazing. So that that's the only guitar lesson you've taken? You're totally self-taught other than that? Or was that just the first one? No, that's that's basically all I took, but I I don't know more than that. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> I I should have been like my fiance, he'll teach me. Like mm -hmm. I'll be like, I you know, I don't I want to play like my song I never told you, how my band plays I never told right, you. Right. So right. they'll he'll teach me new chords. So I've learned some like that and he's taught me some stuff. Like that's how I know how to play try on the piano is because my fiance taught me like the mm -hmm. chords and now sure. But no, I haven't done any more, and I should, because I want to be a better guitar player. But that, that's the ultimate example, really, of delegating, you know? I mean, you're, <laughs> you're just like a business person would do it. That, that's awesome. Hey, I've got a couple listener questions for you uh, from, from our listeners. Uh, Jessica asks, uh, who was Capri made for? If maybe, you know, some songwriters keep this stuff secret, like the Carly Simon, you're so vain, you know, obviously. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, so. um, I wrote Capri for my friend Barbara from high school. Um, she had her first baby at, um, I think she was 19 or 20. Mm -hmm. I think she was 20. And um, she was a single mom and she was naming her daughter Caprice. But it didn't sound as well in right. in the song, so I just shortened it to Capri, and mm -hmm. uh, and so that song's for her. Yeah, good, good stuff. Okay, so Marilyn asked, um, what are some of your other passions, and what would you be doing now if you weren't in the music business, or was music it? Was that the thing? Was that the only way to go? Um, that luckily happened for me because I was kind of a lazy teenager that wanted to do music, but I didn't. Um, I was never putting myself out there. Like I wouldn't have gone to label bringing my music to labels. I was shy. And, um, so I, I, when I was uh, 18 or 19, I took like a couple, um, classes in college, like interior design and photography. Those are things I really had an interest in that I, I still have an interest in. Um, so I think I would have gone down one of those roads, but Either way, they're still in the creative um, field. In the creative world, sure, yeah, sure, yeah. definitely, definitely. Hey, here's a weird one. Uh, this is not creative, uh, but um, a lot of our uh, a lot of our audience, uh, Colby, is real estate investors and uh, people interested in personal finance and stuff like that. What are you may have no answer for this. I, I do not know, but what are your thoughts on income property investing? <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Weird thought. It, it's always been great, and it still is great. Um, I. I do some of that myself, um, you know, and my, my family it's, I think it's, I mean, I move, I, I move a lot. Like we like living in different places. And so we buy a Me house too, for, by the way. Yeah. You, yeah, yeah. 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 So you saying it's fun. And, and instead of wasting rent money, it's, we just buy a house in the place that we're living and then we'll sell it. And then we'll, when we move, we'll buy it in a different place. And, um, sometimes you lose money doing it that way. And yeah. sometimes if you put enough back into it, you, you make money, but I think it's a really good thing. It's yeah. a good safety net. Good, good stuff. Good stuff. Are there any questions that you kind of wish you would be asked that people don't ask you during interviews? Um, I, I don't, I'm not thinking of like specifically anything, but I mean, like, I guess some, I, I always volunteer stuff. Like I, I've always had stage fright. I'm, I'm an introvert. So I'm like really shy. I'm a homebody. Um, most people would consider that so odd, by the way. And, yeah. uh, you know, we, we have a, I won't mention his name, but we have a very famous musician as our client. And it's amazing to see him in concert. I was standing on the stage at his concert recently. And, you know, he's just out there and just the audience. I mean, you know, 10,000 people, they're just screaming. And then he comes back and he's just the most mellow, quiet person. Uh, just, is that, doesn't that seem like a bit of a contradiction? Or tell us about that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a major contradiction and it's a bummer in, for me because it's the hardest thing to get me to go up on stage and perform and sing a song. It, it is not natural. I mean, it's become more natural because mm. I've been doing it for 12 years now or whatever, but um, it's never something that I look forward to doing, unfortunately, to say. And I, I, only until a few years ago when I learned that I'm an introvert was when I knew that it's okay, like that now it's like acceptable before I just thought I was weird and why why didn't why did every other musician like it and not me but now I just know like it's it's okay we're all different and this is who I am and I just need a little more encouragement to go on stage 
That, that's uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, speaking of being on stage, uh, one of our listeners, uh, that was Mel, uh, asked, how do you how do you take care of your health on tours? I mean, tours can be grueling, obviously. And there are actually, you know, there's a website, Musician Wellness, that he, he posted here when he asked that question. Um, you know, any any thoughts or tips about that? Yeah, it's really hard. People think touring is fun. And, you know, there can be moments of it for sure. But you're in a new city every day, you're on a bus with air conditioning, or you're flying every day. And you're basically always, uh, you know, at the odds of, of getting sick somehow, and, you know, being on a bus with a bunch of people, Um, eating healthy, getting exercise on the road, um, always, you know, um, honestly, the wellness is taking care of yourself by the stuff that you put into your body and how you treat your body. And um, I think whenever I have got a cold, like you take the herbal, you know, natural remedies if if possible to get better and save your voice. And I think that's all I can say is doing those things, living that lifestyle will, will be mostly preventable. Uh, you know, will mostly prevent you from getting Get, sick. Getting sick on tour can be very costly, and it can really bum a lot of fans out, right? <laughs> Have you had to cancel an event before over being sick? Yeah, I've had to cancel a few, yeah. and it, and it's a bummer because you have to make the show up, and it changes everyone's plans. Oh, yeah. and It's costly for the tour because you have to bring everyone back out and oh, do the yeah. same thing. And if you don't, then you have to take the actions of like, I've had to take steroids the day of a show because that'll to get your voice back. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then that's only good for that day or two. And then it, it, it makes you even sicker or it's really bad for your body. So you try not to do that either. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Do you, you know, I'm curious on your business model, do you uh, bring this other musician client of ours? He brings all of his, it's basically almost all his equipment except for the big PA system, you know, that the venue always has, but a lot of it is, is his. And, and he says it's, you know, many, many trucks when he goes overseas, they put it on ships. uh, And the cost of bringing all that and doing an event I mean, it was monumental. I, I couldn't believe it. Uh, do you bring all that stuff with you? Is yeah. that part of your tour? Yeah, everyone usually does. Unless oh. you do off shows, you backline most of the things. But mm-hmm. you always bring all of your um, musical equipment. I mean, we bring drums, guitars, and we, we, we bring extras in case something happens on the road. Right. Um, we bring our, uh, you know, our console with our, our sound, like all the, the board, yeah. board, like we do all that because it has all of our settings already in it. And mm-hmm. It, it makes the tour easier because all of our crew, they know exactly what to do, what to set up, and it's yeah. gonna, it's guaranteed gonna work for them, um, mm-hmm. which is time, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's it time back. Time. Yeah, sure, exactly. sure, definitely. Hey, how many people on your crew, uh, include, I guess, including the band members and the, and then the, all the roadies, or do you call them roadies still? <laughs> uh, I'm Eng- of, engineers? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's usually we have like 13. So we don't have a big, uh-huh. um, we don't have a big crew because you know it's like there's usually like seven crew and six or seven of us band members roughly Mm -hmm. like and it it varies depending the tour sometimes we'll do an acoustic tour sometimes we have more stage decor set up like one time we brought a whole stage with us so like Mm -hmm. that we had a semi truck and um there were only two buses that we had but really every tour is different yeah yeah that's amazing okay so uh katie uh one of our listeners asked and she says fan girl girl alert at her wedding uh as they walked down the aisle they played falling for you (laughs) so uh it says um ask how you dealt with being rejected twice from american idol uh and how you overcame that and you know pushed through I, i think you said i think i saw you in an interview or you've mentioned something Somewhere that that was actually a blessing like you weren't ready the first time maybe yeah but there was a second rejection absolutely yeah. yeah I auditioned the second American Idol and then I auditioned a couple years later with my song bubbly actually um, and honestly I didn't want to audition either time um, I just was you know encouraged by friends and family that I can sing and I should audition but I was nervous. I I was a bad auditioner. Like I'm a bad test taker. I'm a bad auditioner and I (laughs) I get nervous. And, um, and so I think that even for me, my personality, like I'm an introvert, I wouldn't have been good on American Idol because I would have been shy and Mm -hmm. very uncomfortable and probably done a bad performance because of all of that. Um, so I wasn't really offended by it. I, it was just, I knew it wasn't the right time. And Mm -hmm. 
it, for me, I really lucked out that it didn't work out that way. Right, so. right. But, you know, musicians in general, and maybe, you know, we'll just have a couple more questions for you as we wrap it up. But in general, musicians or any artist has to go through a lot of rejection. Um, any any thoughts or tips you want to share on that? Because I, I just think that's part of life. And as soon as people in any field of endeavor come to terms with it, yeah. the, the better off they'll be. You know, you've just got to learn how to manage that, right? Absolutely. And it, there's, you know, there's a time for like being, you know, at some point after you've been rejected by or or just it's not going your way for, for far too long. Mm -hmm. I know everyone wonders like, well, what what is this? Why is it like I have so many talented musician friends and, and they haven't been, um, you know, they haven't got a record deal yet or they, they haven't become, you know, successful, quote unquote, successful in that world yet. And I don't know the I don't know the reasoning for it. Their their songs are beautiful, their voices, everything about it, and yet it hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Um, and then in some other ways, you have to think maybe it's not that that one path wasn't the right path for you, or this time wasn't the right timing. Um, it's still a question that I think all of us ask, but I guess just to to stay doing what you love to do and work hard and maybe be prepared in every other aspect of it, um, so that you're ready for the next time. Yeah. Yeah. Good advice. Good advice. A um, couple last things. Patrick asked, uh, what are your primary influences, musical influences uh, from songwriters and musicians? Um, I grew up in Southern California and my parents were into, you know, classic rock, um, you know, Tom Petty, right. Max, Steve Miller, mm -hmm. Joni Mitchell, all of that. So those were my initial influences. And um, that's why my first album, Coco, had the bright, sunny acoustic guitars like just screaming sunshine because that's where I was from and that's right. the music I listened yeah. to. Um, Bob Marley, reggae music, and then um, Lauren Hill. She was the one that like made me really want to be a singer. Uh -huh. and, and John Mayer, like as a songwriter, um, he just you know yeah. all of those right. soulful acoustic. Yeah, sure, sure. And, and did you have a joint venture with uh, Jason Mraz uh, at one time? Or, uh, or did you, well, did we you... have a song together called yeah. Lucky. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, but but is is there anything more to that or was it just a one song kind of venture? Or... Yeah, no, it was just the one song. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good stuff. It's great. Good stuff. Uh, Colby, what's next for you? Well, um, I started this band with my fiance and my friend Jason Reeves, who I've written most of my songs with and his wife. So it's the four of us and we're recording our songs right now. So that's that's the next step. Um, mm -hmm. And I have, I have some other things, but they're not I'm not ready to they're not finished yet so they're not ready um, to talk about yeah well yeah. just just in case they don't come out yet but yeah there's some there's some things i'm working on i know it's, i've taken a, a mm -hmm. bit of a break so good good stuff well hey thank you so much for joining us today really appreciate it and keep uh keep making people happy with your music mm -hmm. i just love it and it was great talking to you on the show today thank you really nice talking with you and i hope to talk to you soon by the way do you want to give out a website or anything or a blog or anything like that that you want to share um, my Twitter? website is, is just, uh, all of my social media is just my full name, Colby Good. Calais. Yeah. Good stuff. Colby Calais, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.